Hey, Big Sis. I heard you got a new car. Hi, Rose. Yes, I did. Mom said it was a Porsche. Is it true? Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't know you were making that much. I'm not. Ian helped me get a really good deal on a used one. Still, it's a Porsche. I can't believe you could afford such an expensive car. Who knew you could be so materialistic? Well, I did a lot of research, and this model is one that is easy to maintain. The cost for repairs is a bit more, but Ian says he'll take care of it. Are you still dating him? He's just a mechanic. Come on, girl. You're a doctor. You could do so much better. Um, you know that we're engaged, right? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. I can't believe you would stoop for someone so... low. Easy. I kiss my fair share of frogs before finding my prince. If that's your idea of a prince, then there is no hope for you. I mean, I thought Eric was the perfect man. He was tall, dark, and handsome. Yeah, and he was a serial cheater. Yeah, but he was also a surgeon. He could have just put up with the infidelity and stayed home. I don't want to stay home, and I'm not interested in a relationship where my significant other disrespects me. If he can't keep it in his pants, he can't keep me by his side. You're so old-fashioned. Yeah, because wanting a monogamous relationship is so difficult. A good man is worth a bit of hiccups. Well, let me know how that goes with your first husband when he cheats on you. I'll make sure to point out that it's normal. Whatever. My husband will be wealthy. So as long as he gives me a gorgeous house, I don't really care. I'm glad you know your limits. Anyway, I need to get going. Okay. But I did want to ask you when you would let me borrow the car. What? Mom said that I could. Um, never. I know what you did to the last five cars she gave you. Remember the time you accidentally backed into a fire hydrant? Or when you mysteriously managed to lose the keys in a parking lot? Sorry, Rose, but I can't trust you with another car. Of course you bring up the past. You're such a broken record, Kimmy. Can't you see that I've changed? I've learned from my mistakes. Look, Rose, it's not about holding a grudge. It's about being responsible and making wise decisions. I've seen the consequences of your actions, and it's not pretty. So anyway, I'm gonna go. We can talk about this another time. Fine. Run away from the conversation like you always do. But mark my words, I'll ask again later. And I won't stop until you give in. The answer will remain, no, Rose. I've made up my mind and I'm sticking to it. You're not getting another car from me. Ugh, you're so stubborn. But guess what? Mom said I could borrow her car whenever I want. It's not her car, Rose. It's yours. And as long as I have a say in it, you're not borrowing any car. But she said I could. She trusts me to take care of it. Look, I understand that mom might have a different perspective, but that doesn't change my decision. I'm responsible for your well-being, and I don't think you're ready for the responsibility of having a car. Have a good day then, Kimmy. But just remember, I'm not giving up. I'll find a way to convince you. I admire your determination, Rose. But just because you say you're an adult doesn't make you one. Actions speak louder than words. Hey, I'm an adult. Stop talking down to me. You always treat me like a child. It's infuriating. Okay, maybe I can be condescending at times, and I apologize for that. But you have to understand, Rose, that your actions sometimes warrant it. You're not making this easy for me. Oh, very mature, Kimmy. Now you're gonna ignore me? Fine. I'll find another way to get through to you. Maybe I'll tell mom about this. We'll see how long you can keep your car away from me then. I'm very disappointed in you, Kimmy. It's good to see you stop pretending to be civil. I'm being civil. You're depriving your sister of something that would make her happy. When she finishes college, she can get her own expensive car. You know that she's taking a couple of years off. That's why I said when. How can you be so selfish? I raised you better than this. You definitely raised me to be a parent to your favorite child. She isn't my favorite. She's just a baby. And as the big sister, you should be doing better by her. Whatever you say, mom. Don't you take that tone with me, young lady. Don't tell me how to use my own property, old woman. What? How dare you? You are such an ungrateful, spoiled brat. Am I, though? Because I'm pretty sure that I paid for her first two years of college, and I'm also letting you live rent-free in one of my spare properties. So you're gonna hold that over my head now? I knew that you were a horrible child. I'm not holding it over your head. 
I'm simply pointing out that you guys are already benefiting more than enough. Besides, she's totaled. How many cars since she turned 16? It's not like we're asking you to buy her a car. She just wants to try driving it for a bit. And my answer is no. Now, I just got off work, so I want to get home and rest. If you need something important, you can call me in a bit. If you just want to keep fighting over this, I'm putting you on silent. I'm going to talk this over with your father. We'll see just how high and mighty you are when your inheritance is on the line. Sure you do that, Mom. Have a good night. Did you hear? Hear what? Jack left me for another woman. My poor baby now has to find a new home. And of course, that jerk took our only car. I'm sorry to hear that. Do you need help finding a new place to live? No. Mom and Dad are letting us move in with them. But I need to find a job. And to do that, I need to have a car. I'll bet. Well, if you need, I can help you pay to rent a car. Or maybe to get a car to hold you over until you're able to get your own. Or you could just let me borrow your car. No. But you don't need it. You can get a new car and you don't have any kids. I'm offering to help you get a car. My Porsche is a non-starter. Besides, it's a sports car, not a family car. Your son would not be safe in it. I think I can decide what is safe for my son. I'm sure you can, unless it gets in the way of you getting what you want. How can you say that? I am a single mom now, and yet you're still being so mean to me. Look, I'm sure Eric can help me find something that is perfect for you and your child. He's got a large network, so I'm sure we can find you something that will be a better fit for you and little Bobby. I can't believe how selfish you are. I need help. And you're refusing to let me borrow the Porsche. It's not a suitable car for what you need, Rose. You need something family friendly, or at least kid friendly. Who says that? I'll be using it with my baby? You did just like a couple of texts ago. Oh, shut up. I'm not taking my baby to job hunt. Having a Porsche will leave a good impression when I'm applying to jobs. The answer is no, Rose. I've told you what I'm willing to do to help you. Either take one of those options or don't. My car is not an option. Then why don't you get me a Porsche? For so many reasons, Rose. You're so selfish. I'm telling mom. Go right ahead. I'm ready for you guys to try to ruin my weekend. What a narcissist. You won't get away with this. I can't believe you. Here your little sister is in a terrible position and you still won't help her. I will. I've offered to help her get her own car, as well as saying I would help her pay for that, or to rent a car. What I am not willing to do is let her borrow my car, or to get her one like it. See? You want her to look bad, don't you? If you really want your daughter, who is prone to crashing cars, to have sports cars, nothing is stopping you. But I strongly recommend you not let her take Bobby anywhere. This is not a family car at all. That's just you justifying not helping her in any meaningful way. Ugh, how did you two become so different? Probably because you spoiled her rotten and parentified me. Just a guess. How dare you? We treated you the way older sisters should be treated. If you loved any of us at all, you would do this for your sister and her child. If helping her get a cheaper, more family-friendly car isn't adequate, then I guess I don't love you guys. Well, I never. I'm going to tell your father and we will change the will the next opportunity we get. Okay, that's fine with me. Especially since I earn more in a year than you guys have saved up. You are a horrible, spoiled child. I'm sorry. Did you confuse me with my sister? Because I'm not the spoiled one. She at least treats us with respect. She treats you like... Never mind. Someday you may come to your senses. But something tells me that you misplaced your reasoning a long time ago. Why you? I don't even know how you ended up being such a horrible daughter. Probably because you always treated me like a babysitter or ATM. Then again, I'm a bit biased in that department. This isn't the end of this discussion. I'm going to get your father involved and we're going to remind you that you need to listen to your parents. Sure, go right ahead. I'll make sure to turn off my phone and enjoy the day with my fiance. It's so rare that we actually get a full weekend off together. Now that he has a new shop, we don't get to see each other as much as we would like, but you're more than welcome to scream into the void. We're gonna come over there and teach you to respect your elders. Go for it, we aren't home. What? Where are you? On a weekend getaway. What about your dogs? How could you be so irresponsible as to leave them at home? We didn't. Ian drove us here in his vehicle. Both dogs fit comfortably in the back. They even have their own windows to enjoy the view. 
Funny how you treat your dogs better than you treat your sister. Well, my dogs are happy just to be passengers rather than to lounge on the beach. The only time they complain is when we don't give them treats when we eat. Are you comparing your sister to your dogs? I'm just using the comparison you established. And that's quite enough drama for me today. Have a great day, mom. I just got home and my car is gone. Do you happen to know anything about that? Hey sis, how was your vacation? It was great. Do you know where my car is? What do you mean? Did something happen to your car? It sounds like something bad happened. Ugh, I just said it. My car isn't here at my house. It's gone. So yes, something has happened to my car. Can we please move on from stating the obvious? Oh no, that's terrible, Kimmy. I'm so sorry to hear that. I guess you'll need to get a new one now, right? Yeah, thanks for the brilliant suggestion, Captain Obvious. Of course, getting a new car is the logical thing to do when your current one gets stolen. Maybe I'll just snap my fingers and a shiny new car will magically appear. Why didn't I think of that before? Well, I was just trying to offer some support. No need to be snarky about it. Look, I appreciate your concern, but it's not as simple as just getting a new car. I have to figure out what happened first. That's why I mentioned checking our security cameras. And then, I'll probably have to call the police to report the theft. Wait, hold on a second. Don't call the police just yet. I mean, what if it's just a misunderstanding? Maybe you parked it somewhere else and forgot? You tend to be forgetful sometimes. Oh, great. Now we're playing the Blame Kimmy's Forgetfulness game. Newsflash, Rose, I'm not an airhead who forgets where she parked her car. I'm pretty sure someone has clearly stolen it. And it seems like you already spilled the beans to mom about it. I... I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't tell mom anything. Why would I do that? Oh, really? Then why did mom mention it earlier? Did the car thief send her a memo while they were at it? Just admit it, Rose. You blabbed and now you're trying to cover it up. I honestly have no idea what you're talking about. I didn't tell mom anything. Don't you dare call the police on your sister. She didn't have a choice. If you were a decent sister, this wouldn't have happened. So you guys are admitting that you stole my car? We didn't steal it. We borrowed the car because she needed a vehicle. You have two cars. You easily could have lent her one of yours. Or she could have taken me up on the offer to get her a car. Or you could have simply not been a selfish witch. This is all your fault. Um, Ian just gave me the mail and apparently I've gotten two traffic tickets both for running red lights and look who's in the driver's seat, it's my loving little sister. If you would have just let her borrow it, then none of this would have happened. If I had let her borrow the car earlier, I would have gotten similar tickets earlier. Clearly, she's just as horrible a driver as ever. Don't you even care that she was in an accident? What? Rose was in an accident? What happened? Someone T-boned her. We only left the hospital a few hours ago. She was in a car accident? In my car. Oh, of course you don't care about your sister. Did you not read that she was in the hospital? I saw that as well as you saying that she's out of the hospital. Wait, was Bobby in the car with her? Thank heavens, no. I've been taking care of him. It's not like your car is practical. That's what I've been saying. She had no business with my car. Well, you should have helped her before you and that worthless fiance of yours went gallivanting on a luxury vacation. Are you kidding me right now? We went on a short weekend getaway. It's the first time we've gone anywhere together in two years. I told you that I would help with getting her a car. You guys were the ones who kept turning down that idea. Of course, nothing is ever your fault. Do you have any idea how much your sister has been through lately? Yet all you care about is yourself and your car. I've pulled the video footage showing you and dad helping her get into my house. Then the three of you left with my car. It should be more than enough for the police. You wouldn't dare. I already did. Not only did you steal my car, you wrecked it. It wasn't her fault. Enjoy your last few hours of freedom, mom. Grand Theft Auto isn't a misdemeanor offense. You worthless, ungrateful, horrible, rotten thing. We will disown you. We'll make sure you pay for this. You'll never hear from us again. Don't think we will ever contact you again. That would probably be the best thing you guys could do for me. And of course, I'm gonna stop all payments for you guys. Good luck finding a lawyer who will help you guys out. Maybe dip into that all-impressive inheritance you've been threatening to take away from me?
Please, honey, drop the charges. We were barely able to make bail. We can't do anything about the car. It's all in the past now. <laughs> I'm still paying for the car I no longer have. Not for much longer, of course, but until the insurance and stuff gets worked out. You know we can't pay you back. That was a practically new Porsche. I know, that's why I didn't want Rose touching it. She's a horrible driver, and Porsches have far too much power for someone as irresponsible as your daughter. But she really didn't have a choice. Did you really think that she could go without a car? She had options. Using my car was not one of them. Even if she decided to take up on my offer, there was no need to get a car over the weekend. She needs a job now. What was she supposed to do? Just sit around and wait for you to get off your butt? Well, her best option wasn't to get you and dad to help her steal my car. Pretty much anything else would have been a better choice. As is, you guys made your decisions. I'm just holding you guys accountable. You can't do this. We are family. You guys are thieves and you destroyed my dream car. You'll get as much sympathy as you've given me over the years. How dare you treat me like a criminal? You're a horrible sister, the absolute worst in the world. You took that crown when you were about three years old and thought it was funny to constantly kick me. It seems you thought you could keep kicking me around. Guess I should have put my foot down before you decided to become a criminal. I'm not a criminal, but now the courts are treating me like one. My ex even got emergency custody of Bobby. Considering poor little Bobby has a deadbeat for a mother, I would definitely award custody to his father too. But you know he doesn't take care of my son as well as I do. That's only because he was working two jobs to keep a roof over your heads and food in your bellies. What? Yeah, I talked to him while you were in jail. I learned about what actually happened, how he worked all the time, only to come home and find you in bed with one of your friends. He got a paternity test while you were behind bars. Now that he has confirmation that Bobby is his son, he's going for full custody. No, that's my child. You can't let him take your nephew away from the family. Funny you should bring that up. I'm gonna babysit regularly, taking Bobby to the park and later amusement parks. That way we can get some downtime. Did he tell you that he cheated on me? He told me that you guys broke up and that you kicked him out after he started dating. And he showed me the breakup text after he caught you cheating. His story checks out, yours doesn't. You can't do this to me. I'm your little sister. I'm just letting you deal with consequences. Mom and dad always protected you from them. It's long past time for you to actually have to face them. I'm gonna come over there and make you stop this nonsense. <laughs> and how are you going to do that? You don't have a car. I'll figure something out. True to her threat, Rose did find a way over to my house. She stole one of the neighbor's cars. When she reached my house, she crashed into the mailbox. Thankfully, her son wasn't with her since he was living with his father. I heard the crash, and when I looked out the window, I saw her screaming from inside the car. I called emergency services, then headed out to try to get her to calm down. As soon as she saw me, she got out of the car and ran at me in a complete rage. Rose took a swing at me, but I easily ducked, stumbling over the driveway lights. She hit her knee hard on the pavement. She started screaming that I heard her attracting the attention of a lot of our neighbors. She ripped out one of the lights and started swinging it, trying to hit me. Fortunately, the cops arrived not long after that. She was so angry she turned on them. Tazzing her, they quickly took down my sister. I gave them footage of the last crime on my property, and I hope that I never have to worry about it again. Who would have thought family was the biggest threat to my peace and home life? My parents got 2.5 years and a $10,000 fine, each for their role in stealing my car. They were paroled not long before Ian and I finally married, but they weren't invited. I had enough stress to deal with planning a wedding. I did not need that kind of family drama. When they called to ask me why they weren't invited, I told them that until they paid what they owed me, they weren't allowed in my life. I received a few payments, but they've stayed far away. Rose got 17 years for over half a dozen felony charges by the time she's eligible for parole. Bobby is going to be in high school. I see him at least once a week and he seems to be doing well. He and his father seem to have a great bond and his new girlfriend is great with my nephew. As for Eric and I, we couldn't be happier. I got another Porsche and Eric added a few details that reminded me how much he loves me. He always calls me Angel, so the little wings are a reminder of just how he feels about me. We've been married a little over a year now and I'm pregnant with our first child. I can't wait for our baby to meet Bobby.